So this is a video I've wanted to make for a while now. It's one of those very frustrating things to talk about in the gun control debate, one of many ways gun control advocates are completely ignorant on the subject. The difference between assault weapons and assault rifles. Dianne Feinstein actually used the phrase AR-15 military-style assault rifles. Many in the news media have said the same thing. Folks, the AR-15 is not an assault rifle and is not used by militaries. So let's talk about what an assault rifle is and how it differs from an assault weapon. In World War II, both sides were using so many resources for the war effort that they kept finding ways to economize. They had been using full-powered rifles and submachine guns, but these were very expensive in terms of ammunition. They used a lot of gunpowder and had pretty large bullets, and it turns out, wastefully so. They tended to over-penetrate, meaning that most of the energy was lost, not doing damage to the enemy. Also, there's something weird about war you need to understand. The objective isn't always to kill the enemy. In a battlefield situation, if you severely wound a person instead of killing him, you remove three people from the battlefield, not just one, because his buddies have to carry him off to safety. You also make the enemy use a lot of manpower and resources in the form of medical care to keep him alive, and that can be expensive. A lot of times, you do more damage to the enemy by severely injuring than by killing. So assault rifles were invented to be lower power than what was being used before. Assault rifles are guns of intermediate power, not high power. They use smaller rounds and less powder, meaning that you can produce more cartridges with the same amount of resources. They were also selective fire, meaning you could switch between single shot mode and automatic mode. Let's get one thing straight. Automatic means you get multiple bullets fired from one squeeze of the trigger. If a gun isn't an automatic, then you only get one bullet per squeeze. Semi-automatic still means just one bullet per squeeze. It only means that you don't have to repeatedly cock a hammer or pull a bolt between shots. Semi-automatic means that after the gun fires, it ejects the spent casing and loads the next cartridge automatically and is ready to fire again. But you still have to release the trigger and reset the firing mechanism in order to fire again. The Colt AR-15 is not an assault rifle. It is not selective fire and cannot be made to fire automatically. And by the way, the AR in AR-15 does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite, the company that originally made it that's now owned by Colt. An FN FAL is not an assault rifle. It's a full-powered automatic rifle. It's too powerful to be an assault rifle. The AK-47 is an assault rifle if you get the selective fire version, but there's also a semi-automatic version with no selective fire available. That version is not an assault rifle. The way they're meant to be used in battle is mostly in single shot mode. The idea is if the enemy is still a few hundred yards away, you can fire and hit the enemy and kill him or at least injure him severely, which, as I said earlier, might be more desirable. But if they get within 300 yards or so, things change. Most people with military experience will probably confirm in the comments that if you've let the enemy get that close, your strategy has failed, and you're now in a desperate situation. Now is the point where you switch over to automatic and do what's known as spray and pray. Get as many bullets going towards the enemy as you can, and hope you take them out before they can get you. That is the purpose of automatic mode. Despite what the media will tell you, it is almost impossible to get an assault rifle or any other automatic weapon in the United States. They are heavily regulated by the National Firearms Act of 1934 and the Firearm Owners Protection Act of 1986. Since 1986, it has been illegal to manufacture a new automatic firearm or to transfer or possess an automatic firearm, except for the government, of course. It is possible for someone to get a permit from the ATF to have a machine gun, but there are all sorts of restrictions. For example, both provider and recipient have to reside in the same state. They have to pay a $200 tax to the ATF. The recipient has to pass a massively strict criminal background check and mental health screening. They have to give the ATF all the details about the firearm, as well as what the recipient intends to use it for, on and on. This process can take months, and even then, most of them aren't approved. And even if you do get approved, since you have to buy a machine gun made before 1986, assault rifles are very expensive. Basically, everything the news media tells you about assault rifles is a lie. So then, what are assault weapons? Assault weapon is a term made up by the left out of whole cloth. 
Aside from the rifleman's assault weapon from the 1970s, which was a grenade launcher, it was never used in the industry to refer to firearms. And in addition to the federal assault weapons ban which has now expired, there are several states with bans or restrictions on assault weapons. And they all define them differently. When the federal assault weapons ban passed in 1994, the Department of Justice said, quote, in general, assault weapons are semi-automatic firearms with a large magazine of ammunition that were designed and configured for rapid fire and combat use. Now, this is contradictory. Rapid fire is another term for automatic fire, but it actually says that they're semi-automatic. They can't be both. And basically none of them are designed for use in combat, although some have selective fire counterparts that are. Various definitions specify things like a folding stock, which shortens the gun, but not in any way that affects the way it fires. A grip that you can hold vertically instead of horizontally, as if that matters. A bayonet lug, because apparently guns are so much more dangerous when they're knives. Even something like a black plastic stock in place of a wooden stock can convert a perfectly legal rifle into an assault weapon. The civilian version of the AK-47, which lefties consider an assault weapon, is functionally equivalent to the Ruger Mini-30, a perfectly legal deer rifle. The only real differences are the stock and the magazine. The ammunition is identical, and both have the same muzzle velocity of around 2300 feet per second. It could also mean a barrel shroud, which likewise doesn't affect how the weapon fires, but can help prevent someone from burning themselves on the hot barrel. Yes. They're banning safety features. And speaking of safety features, a threaded barrel is one, but they restrict those too. Threaded barrels are used for things like flash guards and muzzle brakes, things that can also make it safer to fire, protecting vision and reducing recoil. Also making it safer to fire is a suppressor, and they themselves are highly restricted. You have to get a special permit to own one and pay a $200 tax per suppressor. Suppressors are safety features that have a series of baffles to block the expanding gases, and therefore cut down on noise and recoil. You may have heard them wrongly called silencers, and seen movies where they allow assassins to kill people without anyone else hearing. This is about as realistic as Superman 4. Suppressors reduce the noise down to safe levels to protect hearing, but they do not silence them completely. The AR-15 makes 165 decibels of noise when it fires, enough to be harmful without hearing protection. A suppressor takes it down to about 125 decibels, in the safe range for unprotected hearing. The decibel scale is logarithmic. Every 10 decibels is 10 times the pressure, so a 40 decibel drop is 1 ten thousandth the pressure, way lower, and down to where it's no longer harmful to hearing. So they're a huge help. But 125 decibels is still louder than a jackhammer or an ambulance siren or a heavy metal rock concert. A motorcycle engine is about 100 decibels. A silenced AR-15 is over 300 times that amount of sound pressure. Here's the sound of a suppressed AR-15 being fired. Now imagine that, louder than a jackhammer, louder than a heavy metal rock concert. Suppressors are a very good safety feature, and yet, they're heavily restricted because of ignoramuses who get their information on guns from movies. Some even want to ban them outright. And some places, including New York, Hawaii, and Maryland, count pistols as assault weapons. Now, for an example to look at, we'll consider the Colt AR-15, which the left seems to have hit on as one of the most evil weapons ever made. When California Assemblyman Art Ognos introduced his assault weapons ban in 1985, he said, quote, The only use for assault weapons is to shoot people. These are weapons of war. They are made to kill people, and they are all over California. There is no legitimate use for these. Nobody hunts deer with them. No, they use higher-powered rifles to hunt deer. An AR-15 is a varmint gun. It's used for small game, say fox-sized or smaller, and for pests such as rats or raccoons. It's a small-caliber round, the .223 Remington, which is really just a .22 with more powder behind it. There are handguns that are more deadly than the AR-15. The AR-15, like all rifles, will give you a faster muzzle velocity. All other things being equal, a longer barrel means a faster muzzle velocity. But if you have a higher caliber handgun, it can still pack a much bigger punch. A 44 caliber revolver is much more deadly than an AR-15. 
The 44 can pack over a thousand foot-pounds of energy, compared to 825 for the AR-15. The 44 also has less of a chance of overpenetrating, making it even deadlier. And for lethality, pretty much nothing can beat the 12-gauge shotgun. Also, I mentioned earlier how the AK-47 is just like many deer rifles, so actually his statement isn't true at all. In fact, many deer hunters swear by their AK-47s. By the way, AR-15s are made by Colt. They're only made by Colt because AR-15 is a Colt trademark, so it's technically wrong to call any non-Colt weapon an AR-15. A lot of people have started saying AR-15-like rifle, but the term is completely unnecessary. The industry already has a term for rifles like the AR-15. They're MSRs, or Modern Sporting Rifles. Which is probably why lefties don't say that. Well, they could be ignorant and just not know. They are exceedingly ignorant of guns. But if they said the term Modern Sporting Rifle, it would give up their big point. Guns like the AR-15 are almost never used to kill people. The vast, overwhelming majority of homicides in the U.S. aren't even committed with rifles. They're committed with handguns. AR-15s are mostly used for sporting purposes, for range shooting, for recreation. And their small caliber, low power, and very low recoil makes them a rifle often chosen by women. So, isn't it kind of sexist to want to ban them then? At least by the lefty's own logic? Former Vice President and permanent idiot Joe Biden actually said that women should protect themselves with 12 gauges, but those are very hard to handle and have massive recoil. Firearm experts all over the country laughed at him for this ridiculous and even dangerous advice. Leftists applauded. By the way, there is such a thing as a semi-automatic 12-gauge shotgun. Now, how easy is it to get these assault weapons? CNN has repeatedly claimed that someone can go into a gun shop and buy an AR-15 for $130. Gun enthusiasts everywhere would love to know where they can get an AR-15 that cheap. So what are they talking about? It's a quirk of how our law works. I want you to picture an AR-15 in your head, or anything else that might reasonably be called an assault weapon. Picture it in your head. Got it? Are you picturing something that looks like this? This, according to the ATF, is an AR-15. This is the lower receiver. This allows you to assemble the other parts of the gun. It's not the barrel, trigger, firing mechanism, magazine, or anything else functional like that. This is the part that the ATF requires a serial number etched on, and the person is required to fill out a federal firearms license upon buying. This is the part that costs $130. You cannot buy a fully assembled AR-15 for $130. And now you know how little you can trust the news media. They deliberately lied and implied that you could buy a fully assembled AR-15 for $130 and didn't do anything to clarify that they were only talking about the lower receiver, which is the part specified by the ATF. They deliberately misled their viewers. And really, as we've seen here, that's the whole point of the term assault weapon. To mislead people. Until next time, stay strong and be free.